Hey everybody, welcome to video notes 72. We're going to start calculating some uh, amounts of heat and other things involved in heat changes. So, um, here we go. Make sure you're reading chapters 10 and 14. Alright, so there are many changes going on when you heat a, a pure substance. And so, um, there's uh, slanty parts, slanty parts, and flat parts. Flat part. Okay. And so um, during the slanty parts, there's temperature change, and so molecules are moving more quickly or more slowly, depending if you're adding or taking away heat. And then during the flat parts, a phase change is occurring. So intermolecular forces are um, being affected by the heat change. All right. So let's talk about the slanty parts first. There's maximum of three on a graph, and you always have a single state of matter, single state of matter. So what could happen to that single state? Well, Q is the heat. M is the mass of a substance. Heat is measured in calories or joules. Uh, mass is grams. Could be kilograms. C is specific heat capacity. And it's different for every substance. Um, and then delta T, because it's a slanty part and the temperature is on this axis, so it's a change. Delta for change, T for temp, change in temp. So we're going to have two temperatures because there'll be a change. Okay, so this is the formula that we're going to use. Here's the unit. So it can be calories per gram degree Celsius or joules per gram degree Celsius for specific heat. Temperature change, temperature is degree Celsius. So we're going to need to apply this equation along the slanty parts of any curve to figure out either how much heat is lost or gained, or we can figure out any of these variables. So um, delta T stands for the final minus the initial temperature change. Okay, so one of the things in that equation is the C. Okay, so the MC delta T, the C, C means specific heat or specific heat capacity because different substances change temperature at different rates depending on what they're made of. So we can compare each substance if we find out how much heat, joules, it takes to change a gram of the substance a degree Celsius in temperature. We could also do calories per gram degree Celsius. So specific heat definition is energy required it's an R, to change temp, change one gram, one degree Celsius. Right, so joule per gram degree Celsius. So let's compare. If you had a choice of running on cement in the summer or running on grass in the summer, which would you pick? Well, if you're really tough, you take cement because you love how hot the ground is um, and that that heat transfers quickly into your feet. Or if you're um, different, you would take the grass because the heat transfers more slowly. Okay, if you had the choice of putting your hand in this oven, you wouldn't. But if you had to, and either you had to put your hand in here or grab the metal bar, my guess is you would put your hand in the oven in the air because the heat would transfer more slowly into you than it would if you grabbed the metal bar. Okay, so the way heat transfers through substances is considered a specific heat capacity. Okay, so now we got to apply this equation. So let's see what's happening here. We're adding heat, all right, to a mass of a substance. And we're given the specific heat, and it's water. How much will the temperature change? So if we had to sketch a graph for this, it doesn't say there's a phase change going on, all right? And it says water, so we can assume it's a liquid. So to sketch a graph, the graph will look like this. And this is going to be liquid H2O. And this is what we're trying to find, the delta T. Find, all right? So Q equals MC delta T. You should always write down the equation you're using. We know the Q is 223 joules. We know the mass is 19 grams. We know the specific heat is 4.18 joule for every gram degree Celsius. And we don't know the delta T. So will put X in for that. So to solve for it, X is going to be equal to 223 joules over 19 grams and 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. What happens to joules? See you later. It happens to grams, adios, and we have 1 over 1 over C. So we find out that X is going to be 2.81 degrees Celsius. 
Okay? All right. Flat parts. So that was the slanty part. Now we got to talk about the flat part. Flat part phase change. Remember that flat part phase change. Kinetic energy change. I'm sorry. Potential energy change due to a phase change in overcoming forces that of attractions. Okay, so we have the low flat part and the high flat part. The low flat part is always going to be liquid solid or solid liquid phase change. This is always going to be gas to liquid or liquid to gas phase change. All right. So we need Q, we need heat again. M is going to be mass again. So heat is going to be joules or calories. Mass is going to be grams. Delta A is heat of phase change. Heat of phase change. Okay. So um, this is not uh, a difference. This is just a symbol for the heat of the phase change. So we could have the um, phase change from solid to liquid, liquid to solid, or we can have the phase change from uh, gas to liquid or liquid to gas. Okay. So there's two kinds of phase changes. We have the low phase change and the high phase change. All right, so um, that's going to be joules per gram or calories per gram. So, so let's look at those a little more closely. So heat of fusion is melting or freezing. Well, heat of fusion, we can use the melting or freezing heat because it's the same amount of energy. It's just adding or taking away. So definition, the energy change when a substance freezes or melts, the units, and this is where it's going to go. So let's find it. Let's see. So we have an M here for mass. We have a Q here for heat. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the delta H. So Q equals M delta H fusion. Make sure that you write the formula. 166.30 joules is equal to the 10 grams times the missing thing. So we're going to X is going to be the 166.3 joules divided by the 10 grams. So we're going to get 16.63 joules per gram. That's how much energy it takes to melt a gram of shampoo. Okay. So um, this is for one gram. For one gram. And that's why it's per gram. Okay. Aid of vaporization is the gas to liquid or liquid to gas phase change. Vaporization is the boiling, but it's going to be the same same value. It's just adding or taking away the heat. Um, so boiling or condensing, and this is per, per gram. Okay. So we got to use this formula, which is exactly the same, except we have a different phase change. So let's see. We find the delta H. That's our X, right? Mass, right? and Q. Right. So Q equals M delta H rate. Write down the formula. 279 joules is equal to 9.33 grams times what's missing. Okay, so then 279 joules divided by the 9, whoops, 0.33 grams. We find out that it's going to take 29.9 joules to melt one gram of shampoo. I'm sorry, to boil one gram of shampoo. Boom. Okay. All right. Um, let's go back to here and see if we can draw a graph for that. Okay. So it's a phase change. It's a flat line, and it's at the boiling point. Okay. So that's important. All right. Let's go back to here. This is this problem was about a phase change flat line, but this one was at the melting point. Okay. So that's why we knew to use Q equals M delta H. All right. This one we have to draw a good graph. And our temperature is negative 6 degrees Celsius to start with. And it ends at 116 degrees Celsius. All right, what do we know about ice? Well, at 0 degrees, it's going to melt. And at 100 degrees, it's going to boil. So we have to put those on our graph. So below its freezing and melting point, it's going to be a liquid. At this 0 degrees, the liquid is going to Sorry, I put liquid. Who said we just had solid? And then here, the solid is going to turn into a liquid. And then up to 100, it's going to be liquid the whole time. And here, the liquid is going to turn into a gas. And then from 100 to 116, it's going to be all gas. So we have to use Q equals MC delta T at the solid. 
And now we have to use Q equals MC delta T for the liquid. And then we have to use Q equals MC delta T for the gas. Because there's three slanting lights. And then we have to use Q equals M delta H. Solid to liquid, so we're going to use a fusion one there. And so this is solid to liquid. And then Q equals M delta H uh, liquid to gas. Okay? And so that's going to be the vape one. All right, so we have to use five Qs and then add them to get a total. Add four total. All right, so I want you to try this. Here's some heat data that you might need. Okay, here's a C that we have to use here. Okay, so ice. And here's a C that we have to use here for liquid. Here's a C that we have to use for steam. All right. And then the delta H vape and fuse have to go in the right spots, and then you have to add for a total. So I want you to do this problem. And um, I'll tell you that it should be 3,655 total calories. All right. See if we can get it. All right. The heat of vaporization of acetone is 7.21 kilocalories per month. So again, we got delta H vape. But this time, instead of doing joules per gram, we have kilocalories per mole. All right. So... This is given in grams, so it's a mass, but our delta H value is given in kilocalories per mole. So we'd have to um, we'd have to find out how much energy is released. So we're looking for a Q, um, and it's condensing at its boiling point. So here's a graph. Here's the boiling point of acetone, and it's turning from a gas to a liquid. Okay, so it's one equation Q equals m delta H, and since it's liquid to gas, we'll do vape. All right, energy release means that it's an um, it's an exothermic process. All right, exothermic. The gas turns to the liquid; it has to release energy at its boiling point. Means flatline, flatline, and then boiling point equals con condensation point because if you're adding heat, it's going to boil, but if you're taking away heat, it's going to you're losing heat, it's going to condense. Okay, so we have to do this, but then instead of doing um, mass, we have to change 75.2 grams of C3H6O to moles in order to use the conversion factor. And so if you add that up from the periodic table, you get 58.09 grams for one mole of C3H6O. C3H6O, and um, you find out that you get 1.29 moles. All right, and now I can figure out Q is going to be the moles, 1.29 moles, um, and 7.25 kilocalories, kilocalories for every mole. All right, goodbye, moles. And that answer is 9.35. Okay. All right. So what kind of data are you going to know? You'll get a table that looks like this. And I want you to see that here's the melting and boiling points of the substances you're going to look for. Here's your delta H's. And this is our fusion. So this has to do with liquid, solid to liquid or liquid to solid. Over here, here's our delta H. And this has to do with gas to liquid or liquid to gas. And over here, specific heat, specific heat, specific heat, specific heat. But look, this is for solid, this is for liquid, this is for gas. Notice that these units are kilocalories and calories, calories, calories. If you look at this one, this is joules. But look, same information. Delta H's, delta H's, and then C's. But this time it's in joules. Okay. All right, so how do we check the heat transfer? Well, here's what's cool. Um, heat goes from one system to another. And so if you know how much heat gets lost, you know how much heat gets gained. So here's a key point. Key idea, heat loss equals heat gain. Q lost equals Q gained. All right, that looks like liquid and solid. So I'll change it to words. Q lost, heat loss equals heat gain. It's going to be a key factor because we could track that heat and measure it. Okay, we use a technique called calorimetry. And in calorimetry, here's an example. You could take a hot piece of metal and put it into cold water. So here's an example calorimeter. So here's some water. 
you put a piece of metal in there, piece of metal, metal seat goes into the water, um, and so it loses the heat, and the water absorbs the heat. So the water gets warmer and the metal gets cooler. So heat loss by water, Q, uh, for the water, equals heat gained by the, I'm um, sorry, heat loss by the metal is gained by the water, and the Q for the metal. Right, Q for the metal, Q for the water. They equal each other. Heat loss equals heat gained. Okay, so we can use an MCAT for both. What do we have to watch out for is the C's. All right, so we do calorimetry. We might do a reaction inside this container, and whatever is given off goes into here and absorbed by the water. So we can do heat lost by here or given off by here. It's going to be gained by the water. Ooh, ooh, calorimetry rules. Well, here's an example. Here's some data for water and data for metal. And they went into the same container, all right, all in the same container. Woohoo, water and metal right in here, okay? So if we figure out the heat gained by the water, um, let me see, delta T, and then the heat, oops, this is a C, lost by the metal, the Qs are going to equal, so these are going to equal each other, okay? So we can solve for any missing variable. So let's just say that the mass is 37.5 grams. The um, specific heat of water is 1.0 calorie per gram degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature of the water is 24.1 minus 20. Okay? So 4.1 degrees Celsius change. And we find out that the heat loss by the water is 153.5. Uh, 75 calories. All right, so now we know that equals the heat gain lost by the metal because that went into the water, so it must have come from the metal. And so now we can say that 153.75 calories is going to be equal to the mass of the water. I'm sorry, I said water, but hey, I meant metal. All right, and then temperature change of the metal is 98.9 minus 24.1 is 74.8 degrees Celsius. Right? So what we're looking for is a specific heat of the metal. Right? So now we solve for this C and we find out that 153.75 calories divided by 86.2 grams divided by 74.8 degrees Celsius is going to equal 0 0.024 calories Per gram degree Celsius. So we just use calorimetry, heat lost by metal equals heat gained by water. We got to use this heat twice, once for the metal, once for the water, and we found out that this is specific heat of metal. Specific heat of the metal. Woohoo! Yay us! Okay, so make sure to read chapters 10 and 14. Make sure you can draw the heating curves. No flat line phase change, Q equals M delta H. Evaporation not boiling, specific heat. What does it mean? What does it mean? Does it mean? Make sure you know. All right. Calorimetry is a technique. Know your vapes from your fusions. Math is fun. Heating curves tell us the equation. Slanty is MC delta T. All right. Flat line is M delta H. Okay. All right, here's the objectives again. Read them, do them, love them, learn them.